Hello, Forecaster here again, and we are back for episode 63 of the Railcraft server Let's Play. And if you thought we were done with this thing, then so did I, and we were both fooled. Because complications arose, and it turns out that the um, output from the uh, season sensors weren't as straightforward as I expected. Um, I, of course, expected it to go from 1 to 15 as the season progressed, then go back down to 0, and the next sensor would activate instead. Uh, but it turns out that it um, the sensors actually... Um, go from start, they start from 1 and go up to 15, and that is the halfway point. Then they turn around and go back down to uh, 0 as the remaining half of the season progresses. And then the next sensor activates. So uh, I had to do a lot of tinkering to figure out how to properly um, interpret this data because I couldn't just translate it into the rotation of the dial, of course, because it meant, uh, as I discovered, that the dial would go up to, uh, it would progress through the entire uh, quadrant and then it would turn around and go in the opposite direction, go back down to the zero mark and then it would jump past the quadrant to the next one and then do the same thing and it was a really weird kind of movement um, that was going on uh, so basically what I had to do was um, I had to uh, uh, determine the direction of the dial or of the signal and to do that I have to store two values. I had to store the current uh, signal output and the previous one and using that I can of course determine which direction the signal is going in. Um, so I have done a lot of changes to the code and I've moved all the functions into their own file and I've done a lot of other changes as well. I'm not going to go over all of them I don't think. If you want to see what's been changed you can look at the um, the git history. You can see exactly what I've done and but we're going to look at the solution for the season dial as well as my new uh, testing environment which consists of this script called send test stream and basically it um, sends a bunch of fake data to the API uh, to a separate file and if we go to the dial here, you can see that I have a parameter in the URL called test, and I've set it to true. And the interface says test mode, and it outputs a bunch of debug data. You can see that the dials are all static, and the light and the time reads undefined, because the test stream doesn't set those, uh, because I've only used it for uh, debugging the season dial so far. Um, now the test stream script just has this page and it has a password field for the key because I uh, don't want to put it in the script. Um, so you have to input it manually. So you need the key to use this of course. And uh, it has a start button. Now, if I press the start button, you'll see that the uh, 
the dials, the interface springs to life, and it is sending, uh, it sends each season in sequence. So it goes from zero, then it goes uh, up to 15, then it turns around and goes back down. And then when it reaches zero, it goes to the next season. And I can, I've used this to uh, test the test my solutions quicker. You'll also notice that I have fixed the text on this dial so they line up. Um, I've had some issues with the long ticks. Um, they're difficult to get spaced in between here and line up with the quadrants. And I tried to solve that, but I haven't had much luck. So now you can see it moved on to summer. There is a bit of a quirk with this, however, because it uh, when it goes back down to zero, uh, it waits until the next cycle to bring the next season up to one. And I'm hoping that the way it works in game is that when the current season goes to zero, the next season starts, goes up to one immediately. Uh, otherwise, what happens with this uh, debugger is going to happen there as well, which is a little unfortunate. But basically, um, it kind of stops for one cycle and hangs on the first tick, as we'll see here. So we have zero and then one, and then two. So it, for some reason, instead of hanging on the zero, it stops on the one for an extra cycle. And I'm not entirely sure. I might try to fix that, uh, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. Otherwise, it seems to work fine now. Um, and I had to do a bunch of math, of course, to solve this thing, uh, which was a lot of fun, I say, with some hesitation, because it wasn't really. Um, it was fun once I actually had the correct solution, but I had to, to go through a bunch of tests to figure out how to do it. Um, now, if I click Terminate here, uh, the script is actually going to send a complete set of the object in serialized form, uh, setting all of these to zero, uh, nullifying the data. It waits a little to make sure that um, all of the previous, any pre queued uh, requests get processed before so it doesn't overwrite the null, or the reset one. Um, but yeah, that's basically the test environment. Let's go into the script itself. So, uh, I haven't really done anything pertaining to the um, well, I did some stuff here. I added an array containing all the season keys and I added a an, another array containing the display version which basically I have the first letter capitalized. And then we have the current season and the previous season um, indexes, uh, which gets stored. Uh, I don't think I'm actually using the previous season anymore. And for some reason, IntelliJ doesn't check other files for usages in the project, which is just a little annoying because it says that all of these are unused when they really aren't. Um, now we go into the functions. We have the update season date dial here, which has changed 
quite a bit. I am actually using the previous season, I think. Um, well, I'm setting it. I don't, don't think I'm actually using it. Uh, I don't know. No, I don't think so. But um, I minimize this a little bit by uh, just having one of this code block, which I use to repeat in each of these. Now I just set the current season and then I get the uh, keys and uh, display values from the arrays using this index that I set. Uh, so a bit less redundancy, unnecessary redundancy. Uh, now the new bit, of course, is the get season rotation function, which I made because I wanted to sp uh, have the output from a function so that I could use it, get get it to debug the print for debugging. So this function is what calculates the uh, what rotation the dial should have based on the available data. So first we determine the direction and basically true means clockwise and false means counterclockwise. Uh, speaking in terms of rotation, uh, basically in since it's a redstone signal, uh, true means it's going up false means it's falling. So then, and basically we do this by taking the, so we, we store two versions or two values. We have the regular, uh, just the type, which is the current value. And then we have the previous value and the set data endpoint handles this when you, when it receives a new value, it automatically updates the previous value with uh, what the current value was when it received the request and then overwrites the current value with the new one, of course. Um, so if the previous value is higher than the current value, then that means that the current value is falling. So then the direction is down. So we set direction to false. And then we simply take uh, the direction, if the direction is positive, we just output the current value. However, if the direction is negative, we output the result of this bit of math here, which is what took quite a long time to arrive at. And I even uh, got to it and then I did some, I made some mistakes elsewhere, which made it seem like this wasn't working. So I uh, scrapped it. And then I came back to it later when I had fixed some other problems that caused it to not display correctly. Um, and I not sure how to explain it in a good way. Um, oh, I'm actually freezing to death on the server because I was in survival mode. The server forces you into survival mode when you join, uh, which I had forgotten, didn't notice. Um, but basically, the season dial, each quadrant has 29 ticks or notches. I'm going to call them ticks, even though that may be a little confusing, but I hope you can follow since I've explained myself. Um, so we have the first tick and then we have 28 others all the way up to here. And then on 30, you would be on the um, the border between the quadrants. And if we split this, we get 15. So the halfway point is 15. So up until then, we just need to 
go from 1 to 15 and use that for the calculation, which is the regular signal. However, once it turns around, uh, which is when the direction determines that it's false, so up until that point, we just take the, the current value, which is 1 to 15. Otherwise, we want to we want to start at 15 because that is the halfway point. Um, and then we take 15 because this value will start at 15 and go down. So we'll we'll be at 15 and we want to we want to um, actually the first time the direction, is determined that it's changed is when we go down to 14 and then the previous value will be 15 and then so we'll have this will output 14 and 15 minus 14 is 1 so we will have 15 plus 1 is 16 which is the next tick and then in the, the next cycle when the season value changes which is far in between when we're not using the test stream, of course, um, this will be outputting 13. And 15 minus 13 is 2. So 15 plus 2 is 17. And that's the next notch. And then we keep doing that until more and more of this value remains as this um, goes back down towards zero. And then um, we'll have uh, 30. When this reaches zero, I'm not entirely sure what happens at that point. Um, if it actually reaches 30 or if it reaches 29, uh, it could probably use some more testing. But uh, as we saw, it sort of works, except that little hang on the first tick. Um, then, of course, we have an add value here, because if it's spring, it doesn't add anything, because we are on the first, uh, we'll be here, first segment of the dial. So we'll just go through it as normal. Uh, however, if it's summer, we don't want to start here. We want to start here. So we have to add 90 degrees so that we shift the starting point to here. And then, of course, the same for autumn and winter. If it's uh, if it's uh, if it's autumn, we don't want to start here. We want to add 180 degrees so that we start here, and then 700 or uh, 270 degrees to start at the winter segment. Um, and then uh, I do a little bit of additional math here to determine um, if I need to add additional. And this is to fix a problem where it would jump back to the beginning of the current uh, quadrant uh, between the current, uh, current season and the next one. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a bit hacky, I guess. And there may be a better way to do this, but uh, this sort of works mostly. And that's pretty much it. Uh, all the light stuff and the weather stuff is the same as before. Um, I have changed the key because I realized that I had committed it to the repository. So it was on the root uh, or there is a there is a, uh, a version of the constants file on there with a key in it, but I have now changed it. So it's not that key anymore. Uh, and I'm not going to commit the new one because that would be silly. 
And I hate when I do stuff like that. I've done so before. But I don't want to nuke the repository just to get rid of or and start over because I want to get rid of that file. So I just changed the key. Uh, I guess I could I could commit an empty one so the current version of it doesn't have anything in it. Um, but yeah, um, I also oh I meant the update data endpoint earlier. The set data is a new one I added, of course, that allow you to. Um, overwrite the entire save file uh, at one because previously I had the um, down here and the termination I had four of these calls I had it call the um, update data four times and then set each season separately now it just sends it just calls set data and it uh, sets all of the seasons to zero and all of the previous values to zero all at once. Uh, I also had previously added a reset uh, type, which just took the uh, type and then just set that and the previous version of that to zero, both at once, which I used before set data existed. So I guess I could really, I could really delete this endpoint now. Um, because it's not used by anything anymore. So we're just going to delete that. Took a while for that context menu to open. Um, but yeah, so that's that. If we change this back to live mode, the seasons dial should now work correctly and it it seems to i don't actually know what the current season is but it does look like it's winter and Yeah, there's the light hole. I was slightly afraid that snow had covered it up, but uh, one, I don't think that would have done anything anyway, I realize, because snow is transparent. And snow doesn't form on other transparent blocks, so that is fine. Now, I'm trying to think of other pieces of data I could use uh, in the system to display but unfortunately I haven't been able to uh, think of anything there aren't any more sensors I don't think as we determine the um, um, the ones from the weather mod what did not do anything useful which is a little, a little unfortunate but oh well um, if I think of anything there may be more videos where we interact with this system and expand it but I think that's pretty unlikely and I'm going to end the video here. And hopefully in the next episode, we'll actually be back for a regular episode. So I will see you then.